House Republicans there are ramping up their investigation into the Manhattan DA's office following the indictment of former President Donald Trump. House Judiciary Chairman Jim Jordan now has issued a subpoena to Mark Pomerantz. He's a former Manhattan prosecutor who previously led the investigation into Trump's finances before resigning last year. In a letter accompanying that subpoena, Congressman Jordan says Pomerantz's former role makes him, quote, uniquely situated to provide information that is relevant and necessary to that committee's probe into Manhattan DA Alvin Bragg's office. Bragg later released a statement responding to the subpoena of Pomerantz, writing in part, the House GOP continues to attempt to undermine an active investigation and ongoing New York criminal case with an unprecedented campaign of harassment and intimidation. Repeated efforts to weaken state and local law enforcement actions are an abuse of power and will not deter us from our duty to uphold the law. Joining us now, congressional investigations reporter for The Washington Post, Jackie Alamany. Jackie, good morning. So uh, give us a little bit more of your reporting on this, if you will, and remind people who Mark Pomerantz is. He was on this show a couple of months ago with a new book in which he criticizes Alvin Bragg for not moving faster in these prosecutions of Donald Trump. That's right, Willie. Mark Pomerantz resigned uh, last year due to frustrations. He was serving under Alvin Bragg as a prosecutor and felt that the investigations into former President Donald Trump were not moving fast enough. He resigned again out of frustration. And in his book, uh, Donald Trump versus the People, he outlines this idea uh, that everyone on his legal team, the team that was investigating potential financial crimes that Trump committed, harbored no doubts about the fact that Donald Trump uh, committed a crime or multiple crimes, um, which is potentially what Jim Jordan might hear from Pomerantz if he ultimately decides to appear uh, before the committee. But obviously, he's a ripe target for Jim Jordan as they're trying to sort of tease out and, and bolster this case that uh, the DA's office has weaponized the judicial system against conservatives. Yeah, but Pomerantz's criticism of Alvin Bragg was not that he was being too hard on Donald Trump, is that he wasn't being, <clears throat> excuse me, hard enough or moving fast enough. NBC News legal analyst Andrew Weissman said this last night about the subpoena. When I heard that today, I was thinking um, Jim Jordan is going to have another sort of, uh, you know, dud on his hands because so far that has really backfired for him. Yeah. Putting Mark Pomerantz, who was used to lead this case, um, in front of the American people. We know what he's going to say because he wrote a book. The book was unauthorized. Um, it's just his version. There's been some controversy about whether it's accurate or not. But this is what he says in his book. Donald Trump is guilty, and he should have been prosecuted <laughs> long ago. The picture doesn't for, get better for right, Trump. If he should have been prosecuted talks. for more than what he's been prosecuted for. That's going to be a very odd thing for a Republican to elicit um, to the American people. So right. there was a part of me that was like, I mean, bring it on. So, Jackie, what does Congressman Jordan hope to get out of these hearings, out of this weaponization committee, other than maybe slowing down the process and gumming it up a little bit, which obviously hasn't worked because the former president was indicted a couple of days ago? That is often the strategy here we should keep in mind from conservatives, this idea of trying to muddy the waters by uh, really throwing anything in, into the mix that might provide Republicans with an opportunity to criticize investigations into Donald Trump. But Jordan has stated that he believes that uh, Pomerantz's book and the pressure that it might have put on Alvin Bragg uh, bolsters their case that Bragg out, acted out of uh, political motivations as opposed to moving because of, of for legal reasons uh, as a prosecutor. Um, but I think that, uh, you know, the, the point that a lot of Democrats are now making, that it's a double-edged sword here, that if Mark Pomerantz actually does testify or provide documents and records, uh, he's going to continue to make this case that Donald Trump is guilty of several crimes, uh, then he's going to be doing the exact opposite of Jim Jordan, what Jim Jordan had hoped to be doing. Of course, I should note, I'm in the middle of Pomerantz's book actually right now, but he does point out and outline some of the reasons why Bragg might have decided not to bring the case earlier. He lists through some of these hurdles, some of which Bragg has already addressed, such as uh, sort of elevating these charges from a, a misdemeanor to a 
felony. But some of the other hurdles that Pomerantz talks about was a statute of limitations, along with evidence issues and bringing forward potentially a tarnished witness in Michael Cohen. So if Pomerantz, again, were to appear before the committee, he would have to discuss sort of the full array of uh, what he has already publicly said. Uh, Jack Gates, Sam Stein here. Again, this I was mentioning in the last blog, but this just goes to the idea that I think Republicans are living in a, sort of a closed-off media ecosystem where they think bringing in someone who's on the record saying Trump should be prosecuted and committed more crimes than he's being prosecuted for, bringing him in as a key witness. I guess my question, though, for you is sort of a technical one, which is, Will the subpoena work? Uh, do do they have a leg to stand on? Could Pomerantz just say, "Look, this is an ongoing investigation. I'm not going to talk about it. I'm not going to prejudice it." Uh, and if he does fight the subpoena, what do you suspect Republicans will do after that? Well, that is what Pomerantz is being advised to do right now, and he's previously told the Judiciary Committee that he wouldn't be providing records or documents when they initially sent him a request. This was prior to the subpoena. Uh, but the general counsel from the Manhattan DA's office has advised that Pomerantz not cooperate with this. It is longstanding policy, uh, federally and locally, to not divulge any details about an ongoing investigation, which is why this subpoena is a, a bit unprecedented. Unprecedented, although not as unprecedented and escalatory if this subpoena had gone to Alvin Bragg, because obviously Mark Pomerantz uh, no longer works for the district attorney's office. But I think Pomerantz has a little bit of a tricky case here because he has spoken publicly about the investigation. He divulged details in, as Willie noted, an unauthorized book about the investigation. And that is the argument I think you're going to hear Republicans uh, beat the drum on going forward, that Pomerantz has no reason to flout this subpoena, although that is coming from a chairman who himself uh, mm. flouted a subpoena from the January 6th committee just last year. Ooh, the Washington Post, Jackie Alamany, thank you once again for being on Thanks, this Mika. week. And Sam Stein.